Okay, so uh, last time we started talking about race conditions and uh, we defined what the race conditions are and we kind of talked about uh, uh, the problem with the race conditions. The, the, the simple definition of race condition is this. Uh, if I have more than one process and they are sharing the uh, same memory space, they are sharing data, if I run these processes or the threads, uh, from now on, whenever I say multi-process, I, I mean both multi-process and multi-thread, okay? If the final results depends on your scheduling decisions, then there is a race condition, okay? So if, if, I, have a, if I have a program, program A and program B, if they don't share any data, so my scheduling decisions should not change any, any of the final results because each one is working on their own uh, data. But if the data is shared, if one of them is modifying writing the data, the other one is reading the data, so from time to time my, my, my results will change because of my scheduling decisions. And I gave you an example about this. Uh, on this example, Okay, uh, so on this example, it was it was a spooler example. We said that we said that uh, uh, one process, two processes are trying to write to the same spool, spooling queue, and uh, this is the code that they are that they are running. Both both of them are running exactly the same code. Only one of them is trying to put file A in this position, and the one of them is trying to uh, put file B and increment this in pointer. If I run this program first, then this one next, I get what I wanted because uh, I put both of them in my, in, my, in my spooler queue. If I run this one first and this one next, that's okay. But if out of bad luck, if there is a switch while I am running this one, I run this line, there is a switch, now I run this line, I incremented this when I came back to here, and I incremented that. That's that's. If you remember that one, we, we end up losing one of the file names, and we end up having a, a garbage file name in one of the positions. Okay, that was that's that's the that's the result of the race condition in this case. So there is a race condition between these two uh, processes running on the same data. What is the same data? Same data as this 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 uh, this array also these two global variables so we need to do something about this uh, so to okay first of all to eliminate the race conditions you will say that i am not going to share data if you don't share data there are no race conditions but that's kind of the beats the purpose of having a uh, multi-threaded applications multi-threading means that the threads are supposed to be cooperational they are supposed to help each other, right? The threads, that's what we do with the threads. With the threads. If they are helping each other, they have to communicate. Communication is through the usage of the uh, uh, common uh, variables, common global uh, uh, variables, common memory area. So uh, eliminating the common area doesn't do any good for us because that beats the purpose of using the threads. So, we have to use the common area, so that means that we have to have the race conditions, so we have to find solutions for these kind of um, race conditions, okay? So that's our, that's our uh, uh, motivation for this. We had a new definition, critical region. Critical region is this. If I define a critical region, okay, this is my critical region. I, I, I don't know what this A is, but I guess it means R, maybe, critical region. Critical region and critical area. Did I say critical area? I don't, I don't remember. So uh, if this is my critical region and critical region, 
if I make this critical region mutually exclusive, that means that if process I is within this, uh, within the border of the critical region, okay, process B cannot enter this region, and vice versa, okay, if process B is in this region, then process A cannot be in this region, okay. So this is called mutual exclusion, mutual exclusion, okay, uh, mutual exclusion is some way of making sure that only one process is in the critical region, okay. So either the operating system or other, our multi-trading library will make sure that only one thread can be in the in the in the critical region of its own. Okay, that's what we go, are going to try to do. Okay, so uh, these are some of the rules about the critical regions. They say that okay, uh, theory says that theory of the multi-threaded application says that. Maybe I shouldn't call it a theory, but this, these are the set of rules. Okay, so if you are if you are implementing critical regions with your uh, libraries, multi-trading libraries, or your operating system, so number one rule is no two processes may be simultaneously inside their critical regions. Okay, so if this is my critical region A, critical region B, they cannot be in the same region. Okay, either one of them is in the region or both of them are outside of it. They cannot be simultaneously in their critical region. By the way, I keep talking about I keep talking about two processes or three two threads only, but uh, all of these rules are easily generalizable to more than two processes up to n processes. Okay, you cannot make any assumptions about the speeds or the number of CPUs. You cannot say that I know that A is very very fast. It is very very. I mean, the the critical region of A is very small, so it is very fast and etc. Don't make these kind of assumptions. You can't do that, okay? And uh, if nobody is inside their critical region, then you cannot block the other process to go into the region. So if the critical region is available, you cannot block anybody. That's one of the rules. And uh, there is a rule for starvation. Uh, starvation is this. The resource is available, but for some reason you are not giving the resource to that process. Okay, so I don't have to. I I shouldn't. I shouldn't. I shouldn't have to wait uh, until until infinity to enter my critical region. You might say that well, all, all the others are using this critical region, uh, and it is not turn your turn your turn yet. No, you can't say that. Okay, I don't have to wait indefinitely to enter the critical region. Don't don't uh, don't let me starve, okay? So I should have an opportunity to enter the critical region from time to time, okay? So we will try to enforce all of these rules with the critical region mutual exclusion solution that we are going to develop. That's going to be that's going to be our motivation. So uh, in this case, uh, I think I gave you this example: process A and process B, okay? So, if process A enters the critical region, it continues in the critical region, it does something, it will take some time. Uh, the scheduler may, uh, may, may decide to switch from process A to process B, doesn't matter, it is, it is continuing execution. Let's say process B is started running and process B is trying to enter the critical region here, but our system, operating system or our multi-trading library we not let uh, process B enter the critical region, so B will be blocked at the beginning of the critical region. Okay, B will be blocked at the beginning of the critical region until A leaves the critical region. Once A leaves the critical region, then B can enter and do its job. So if we give this example on our simple, simple codes, puller code, okay. So this way I will make sure that a does this writing the name to the buffer and incrementing this variable and only after that b can do it okay if b started first then b has to complete this then a has to complete it later okay but uh, if if i am in the middle of this process a and a switching occurred b tries to enter the critical region no the operating system says that you are blocked because somebody else is using the critical region okay so critical region doesn't prevent you from switching from process a to process b 
But if that switch happens, okay, process B cannot be cannot enter the critical region. Okay, that's that's the that's the idea of critical region. So what are we gonna do? Remember, this is the course of the operating systems, and we are going to develop some techniques uh, to to satisfy these four rules from the operating system side, and that's what we are going to do. So these are some of the techniques that we are going to use to do uh, mutual exclusion. Okay, these are some of the techniques. The, one of them is disabling interrupts. This is what we are going to do. Maybe um, let's go to that program again. Okay, so it says that before you begin your critical region, you disable interrupts. So issue that uh, 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 CPU instruction that disables all the interrupts. And when you are done, you enable all the interrupts. Enable interrupts. Okay. Since I disable the interrupts between these two lines, no interrupt can happen while process A is running. Okay. So that will include any timer interrupts that will include any hardware interrupts or software interrupts, whatever. Okay. No interrupts can happen. That means that no switching can happen from process A to somewhere else. Even the operating system cannot take over uh, my, uh, uh, my CPU from me. Okay. So that makes sure that this race condition will not happen. This bad situation will not happen. And I'm going to do the same thing with the disable interrupts and enable interrupts. The same thing here. So whoever gets into the critical region will disable the interrupts and then they enable the interrupt. That will be that will be that will be it. And last time we, I discussed this and I didn't like this. I didn't like this idea. Can anybody the the does, does anybody remember what, what did I say about this? Why didn't why didn't I like this? Yes. Yeah. Well, I mean, disabling interrupt is something privileged, and uh, I shouldn't give the give that privilege to the user and user, because what happens if the user disables the interrupts, and out of bad programming forgets to enable the interrupts that means what uh, that that user has the control of the whole computer okay and operating system cannot take over the cpu because timer interrupts are not happening my hard drive is telling me that something happened i need to i need to load this uh, buffer to your memory and i cannot respond i'm getting something from the network i cannot respond etc basically my program my co whole computer is crashed so uh, the disabling interrupts is a privilege instruction and all end users they don't have this privilege. That's why I don't I can't I can't do that. Okay, I can't do that. You may say that okay, call the operating system to disable the interrupt. No, I can't do that. I can't there is no system call that says disable the interrupts. There is no such there is no such system call. That would be meaningless, right? So uh, this is not a very good solution. So this is out of question. And besides, if I have multiple processors, doesn't matter if you disable the interrupts of one of the processors, the other processor can go in and uh, change this part, right? So that's not going to be useful. So let's let's forget about for now. Let's forget about this disabling the interrupts things, okay? From the end user's perspective, but the, um, we are going to disable the interrupts at some point. But the operating system will do it, and it will make sure that it is enabled in a very, very short amount of time, but not at this level, at the user level. So let's let's do something else. Let's do something else. That's what we are going to do after this point. Okay, let's look at this. Okay, so disabling interrupts is available only to the kernel privilege mode, but they're not available to the user processes. Doesn't work well on multiprocessors. Okay, so I am not going to do that, okay? But maybe I can do this. So the idea is this. I will use a variable named lock, okay? I will use a variable named lock, and it's a global variable. Okay, its name is lock. 
It's a global variable. And I, I use this uh, global variable to see that if anybody is in the critical region. OK? If somebody is in the critical region, then this lock will be, let's say, 1. So if I see that if lock is 1, I will not enter the critical region. Let's say this is our thread number or process number 1. OK, process number 2 is doing exactly the same thing, exactly the same thing. Process number 2, uh, while lock is not equal to 0, then I do some stuff like the put this file name into the uh, array, etc. Then make lock one, and and then I say I am out of the I am out of the uh, critical region. Okay, no, 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 no. I am doing something wrong. Sorry, 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 sorry. No, don't don't do that yet. Okay, so lock is one. So this is the beginning of the critical region. This lock has to be one. Then do your stuff. Pi name, remember this. Okay. Uh, array in guess the file name. Okay, then in plus plus then lock is now zero so i am out of the critical region to enter the critical region you check your lock if lock is not zero then you are in an infinite loop okay again lock is an uh, i am in an infinite loop so all the processes are running the same code if the global uh, variable named lock is one P1 cannot enter this critical region. P2 cannot enter this critical region. If it is one, that means that somebody is using it, right? So I am going to wait that person, that process to leave the critical region. When they leave the critical region, they will make lock zero. Okay? They will make lock zero. That's that's the that's the idea of the that's the idea of the lock variable. So it's a global variable, and uh, I am going to share it. I am going to use this to to, to, to see if anybody is in the critical region. This kind of solution is called, this kind of solution is called busy waiting solution. Why is it busy waiting? Because I keep running the same code. If I am waiting for something to happen, I am running this infinite loop. Okay? I am busy, but I am waiting. That's, that's why this is called busy waiting. Okay? I am busy and I am waiting. That's why uh, I, I call it busy waiting. Okay, uh, we don't we like some busy, we like busy waiting because it's a very simple solution, but there are some problems with it. So we are going to handle that those problems later. Uh, so it looks like we are wasting the CPU time and etc. Okay, so uh, the, 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 this is the solution uh, about mutual exclusion. But again, as always, uh, we have a small problem with this solution. The solution is this. Suppose, suppose, okay, lock is zero, P1 started running, okay, P1 came here, while lock is not zero, okay, in an infinite loop, but lock is zero, so it's going to skip. It will come to this line, again, as always, out of bad lock, a switch happened, P2 is running now, right? And P2 will say that, uh, P2 will say that, let me check lock. If it is zero, then I am going to enter the critical region. Lock is zero. I entered the critical region. I entered the critical region. I made lock one. Okay. Switch happened again. I came back here. I made lock one again. So what happened? Both of them are in the critical region. I violated rule number one. No two processes may be simultaneously inside their critical regions. That's not happening here. So what happened? The problem is this. The problem is this. If there is a switch between these two lines, and out of bad luck, I, 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 I run this, this process P2 at the same time like that, 
I will see another critical, I, I will see another race condition, okay? It will be as bad as the initial problem that I showed you before, okay? So uh, we need to find a solution. The problem is this. I, I have, I have <coughs> these two lines. There must be a way of executing these two lines at the same time without any interruption and etc. So, so, okay, somebody smart came up with this idea. Okay, why don't I do this? Is this a good idea? So it is. It is trying to do, do, do this. Log plus plus is not equal to zero. Then log minus minus. See, it is. It first checks if the log is zero. But every time after the, the, the check is done, it increments log by one. If the result is not zero, it is going to decrement it to put it in the uh, correct value. If it is zero, this will get out of this loop and the log will end up with the value of one. Did you like the solution? So it is a, it's a, it's a, in one shot, in one execution, it is both incrementing log by one and it is checking if the value is zero, right? So C plus plus solution or C solution. I mean, it looks like you you are running the same thing, checking the value of lock and incrementing it by one at the same time. But if you look at this lock plus plus not equal to zero, in terms of assembly, the CPU is executing this. If you say that load lock to R zero, okay, and then and then make a copy of R0 with register 1 and increment R1 by 1 and store the result of R1 to lock and check if R0 is 0. So that means what? So this whole thing is, this whole thing is this line, okay? So the switch can happen here, switch can happen here, here, here or here. So we didn't solve anything. I mean, C doesn't mean that the C language, one line of C language doesn't mean that it is going to be executed in a single CPU cycle. Okay. We need five, four, five, four, six separate instructions to execute this one. So this did not work. Okay. Maybe we made it a little bit more difficult to, to have a switch while this is happening, but it is still possible. You might say that, well, this is a one in a billion chance of having a switch uh, in this in this case, or even if the switch happens, what are the chances of uh, having another process entering the critical region during that time? No, you can't assume those kind of stuff. That's against the rule number, rule number two or three, I don't remember. Yeah, you cannot make any assumptions about the speeds or the number of CPUs. You cannot say that my CPU is so fast, it's not going to happen. I mean, the switch, it's the, the chance of having... No, we don't write programs that will work 99.999% of the time. We write programs to work 100% of the time, okay? No exceptions. Uh, that would be a way, I mean, having a bug in your program that is happening 50% of the time is a bad thing. But it is better than having a bug that happens 0.0001% of the time because that, that bug is so rarely happening, probably you will not catch it with your test code. Only your customers, I mean, if you sell this program to millions of customers, one of them will have it every day, right? So that will be a, that will be a bad thing. So that's not a good solution. You can't assume that we are going to do something else. And people have defined uh, lots of solutions for this problem. And one of them is this. This is called strict alternation. Very smart solution. Let's look at the solution. This is, let's say I have two processes, two threads. One process is here, the other one is here. Okay. There is a global variable name turn. That's why I don't use, okay, this thing. Okay, turn is a global variable. It could be either zero or one. 
zero zero is this process p0 and this is p1 this one says that okay th see there is an there is an infinite infinite loop here while true i am going to do this i am going to enter the critical region whatever i need to do inside the critical region i will do it i will i will leave the critical region out and i will do non critical region stuff that are that are the stuff that doesn't share any memory with anybody but inside the critical region there might be there might be race condition that's why that's why i need to guard the critical region with some kind of a lock this one say that if turn is not zero then i will be in an infinite loop okay if turn is zero then i will be in an infinite loop if turn is zero then i can enter the critical region because it is my turn when i am done with critical region i make the turn one i am saying that i am done with this with this uh, critical region with this common memory okay now uh, whoever has the turn number one can take the can take the critical region and i will keep doing my non-critical region whatever whatever i am doing okay and p1 says that i am going to wait until turn becomes one okay so at the beginning turn is zero this guy said so that if turn is not zero in an infinite loop turn is zero i entered the critical region i made the turn one i made the turn one i am in the non-critical region whenever it doesn't matter okay if while i am in the critical region while i'm in the critical region here turn is zero right if switch happens this loop cannot enter the critical region why because turn is zero right it has to wait until the turn is one when this one is out of the critical region turn becomes one and now this one can enter the critical region after the critical region this one makes turn zero right so it's like that's why it is called strict alternation strict alternation okay the strict alternation this one goes into the critical region then this one then this one then this one there is a there is a there is a there is a uh, there is a schedule like this and this one and that one this one and that one okay again we are doing some busy waiting here busy waiting and busy waiting good so the rule number one no two processes can be inside the critical region at the same time cannot happen in this picture right it simply cannot because to be able to enter the critical region here turn has to be zero for this one and turn has to be one for this one but who is going to make the turn one uh, uh, this process has to do it to to make the turn one this one has to be out of the critical region right because i mean this line happens only once for the whole software okay it is inside this p0 if p0 doesn't make turn one this one will never enter the critical region likewise okay likewise this one cannot enter the critical region if turn is not zero okay so there is no problem in terms of rule number one no two processes can be inside the uh, critical region at the same time cannot happen but as always there is a problem with the solution too not rule number one but some of the other rules let's let's remember the rules again the rules are saying this okay we are okay with this one okay no assumptions may be made about the speed or the number of cpus maybe the rule number two and maybe number three okay and maybe <laughs> number okay that 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 code that solution that solution strict alternation solution has problems with rule number two and three and four actually actually at the same time let's see the problem maybe i should let you think about it a little bit think about it in terms of rules number two three four yes yeah that's a very good point what if 
let's say P2 is terminated, right? P2 is terminated, right? It's not, sorry, P1 is terminated. P1 is not running. Or better yet, let's say P0 is terminated. It is not running, but P1 is running, and P1 is waiting for turn to become zero, 1. But since P0 is terminated, I cannot I cannot enter my critical region. So that's the violation of what? Rule number 4. Rule number 4 says that I don't have to wait until infinity to enter the to enter the critical region or if nobody is in the critical region the critical region should be free for me to enter right so that's the that's the thing the other thing is that i mean i mean the one of the processes doesn't have to be terminated both of them are alive but p0 is running much faster than p1 let's say let's say let's say we have this P0 entered the critical region, it did the critical region, made the turn 1, run the non-critical region, okay, without switching to, to P1, it entered the, it entered the, it began the, the loop again, it is waiting turn to be 0, okay, but turn is still 1, and this one is too lazy, it is still in the non-critical region, doing a very, very lengthy task, okay, this one says that I will spend maybe half an hour in my non-critical region. Okay? So I am, until I am done with the non-critical region, I cannot enter my critical region. If I can, if I don't enter the critical, the critical region, I cannot make this turn zero. So you have to wait. This one says that critical region is available. Nobody is in the critical region, but I am still waiting. So that's the violation of rule number three, I guess. Okay? Critical region is available, but I cannot enter it. That's the that's the problem. So, this mutual exclusion with busy waiting is not a good solution. I mean, the rule number one is okay, but critical region is available, and I'm waiting, and that's not a that's not a good thing. Okay, these kind of problems happens a lot if you do multi programming. If you are running a, if you are writing a, if you are designing a software that with with multi thread multi threads threads helping with each threads helping each other you will run into these kind of problems uh, the fact that you have five processes the fact that you have five threads in your software doesn't mean that your software will be five times faster even if you have five cpus because you will have to take these kind of problems you will have to take care of these kind of problems and that will slow down your 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 program and sometimes by making your program multi-threaded you may end up making your whole program slower slower than the single process single threaded application i mean think about this case let's say remember our multi-threaded application of the word processor let's say this is doing the spell checking this is doing the backup the spell checking cannot continue until the backup writes all the data to the desk, right? So if, if, if something like this is happening, then my, my whole word processor program will be very sluggish. What are you doing? I am doing the, I am doing the back, taking the backup. Well, why we are doing the taking the backup thing? Why don't you do the spell checking? I can't continue. Well, I mean, you are not waiting for something critical. Well, so that, that, that can happen. So designing multi-threaded multi applications is something else. It is, it is difficult. Uh, these kind of problems can happen. Uh, 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 your programs might uh, uh, work in, not in a correct way. Also that you might have some performance issues. Okay. So we are going to look at those. So we are going to find a solution for this one. Let's look at some of the solutions from the, from the, from the uh, literature. Okay. So this is the problem. Okay. Process one non-critical region takes uh, a long time to execute, so it won't re-enter its critical region. So that's why we don't do that kind of a solution. Somebody named Patterson, okay, found a solution, software-based solution, okay. It's called Patterson's solution, and it can be easily generalized. Okay, by the way, you can generalize this into and processes so what are you going to do 
if turn is not 0 weight, then make turn 1. If turn is not 1 weight, make turn 2. Then the, t the third one makes turn 4, etc. So the last one makes a turn. The last one makes a turn 0. So it is easy to generalize this into more than uh, more than two process uh, multi 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 trading. So, but again, the same problem will be valid there. Let's look at the solution, Patterson solution. Patterson solution is again easy, and this one won't have any problems about uh, rule number one, two, three, or four. Mm -hmm. It is a little bit more data used in this case. Okay, uh, and this is what we are going to do. Okay, enter region and leave region. Whenever you are, whenever you are uh, entering your critical region, you call this function with your process number. And whenever you leave your uh, critical region, you call this function with your process number. Let's say I have two processes process number zero and process number one okay I have just two I have just two uh, processes process number zero and process number one uh, this can be generalized to n processes but we are not going to talk about uh, uh, that in this in this in this course okay so let's look at this code so you this is what I, okay let me show you enter okay let me go to this one. How am I gonna, okay, maybe erase it all, all together. Can I do that, like that, okay. So this is what you're going to do. No, this is not a good idea. Let's mod let me modify <laughs> our original one, our original, okay. That's why I don't use this one, but I started using it. Okay, so this one says that enter critical, enter, let me say, <coughs> enter critical region, I am process number zero, and leave critical region, I am process number zero. Again, enter critical region I am process number one and leave critical region I am process number one so that's how you modify your code and I am going to show you the internals of these two functions as you have seen the critical region leaving the critical region is very easy the code is just a single line of code entering is a little bit involved but it is not that difficult let's look at the code <coughs> it's a Patterson solution. Okay, here's the code. So, uh, three simple defines falls through and n is two number of number of uh, processes. There is a global variable named turn. Let me make okay. This is turn. Okay, uh, turn is going to be either zero or one. And there is a there is a there is a uh, there is an array of size two interested. Okay, this is interested. Uh, process number process number zero. If it is interested in entering the critical region, will make this true. And process number uh, one will make this part true if it is interested in entering the critical region that's the one okay if turn is zero that means that process number zero is trying to enter the critical region again so let's look at the code okay let's let's look at the leave region first you will simply make your process uh, id okay if i am process number zero interest at zero becomes false so i am put i am putting f f here if this is f okay that means that if both of them are F, that means that none of them are none of them are in their critical region and they are not interested in their critical regions. Okay? So anybody who, who wants to enter the critical region can enter the critical region. That's the that's the meaning of it, right? 
So that, that's one thing. Okay. What what else? What else? If this interested process is true, then 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 I must be inside the critical region. But then I must be inside the critical region, or or maybe I should look at the enter region enter region first. Okay. So let's look at this code enter region. So enter region says that I have a local variable. Let's see, this is a local variable, not global. So that means what? Both of those processes, process number zero and one, they will have their own copy of other. Okay? This is in the stack. Okay? These are globals, this is a local. So there is an other inside P1, okay, there is other, and inside P2, there is other. Okay? This one says that other is the value of other is one minus process. So for P1, for P1, the value of other is going to be what? For P1, the value of other is going to be, if process is 1, right? The value of other is going to be 0. For P0, let me, no, no, no. I, this is not a good idea to call them 1 or 2. Let me call them 0 and 1. For, for P0, since process ID is 0, other becomes 1, okay? For P1, other becomes 0. So the, the, the each process knows the process ID or the process number of the other process, okay? So each of them has this. And then when I am entering the critical region, I run this and inside this interested array I say that if I am process number zero I make this interested true okay and I make this turn zero okay so I am interested in entering the critical region I made the z uh, uh, process uh, turn zero and I am running this weird looking while loop, an infinite loop, probably an infinite loop. Okay? It says that if turn is equal to process, well, well, I just made turn zero and the process number is zero, if I am P0. And if the interested other is true, then run in an infinite loop. See, this is an infinite loop. So it means what? I am checking if the other one is interested inside the, uh, for the critical region too. If I make this process number, if I, if I see that the process number is the same as the turn, and if the interested other index number other is true, then I will run in an infinite loop. But in this case, I see that the others interested is false, and turn is number zero, then I will not this one, this part will be false, this part is true, so I will not run into this infinite loop, so I will enter the critical region. I will return from this uh, enter region function. I will not be blocked. I will not be blocked. Okay, so I will be in the critical region, I will come back and I will make uh, interested uh, zero false, and I will be out of the critical region. Okay, let's play the, our scenario of let's, let's get unlucky. We are very, very unlucky, okay, I am running the same thing again. Uh, as a process zero, I entered this function. I am entering the critical region. Int process, okay. Other is zero, other is one. Interested process is true like that one, okay. I made turn process. So turn is one, turn is zero, sorry. Before I get to run this while loop, switch occurred. And P1 is running the same code. Okay, P1 is running the same code. P1 says that, okay, P1 says that, okay, I will make, okay, I, okay, P1 says that I am process number one, other is zero, like this one, okay, I am interested, process is true, so I will make one true, okay, so both of them are true now, very interesting case. Make the turn process, so turn is going to be 1, it used to be 0 now. Now when I come to this while loop, 
turn is equal to process. Process is, uh, process is, of course, it is by the way. Okay, each one has their process IDs. For this one, it is zero. For this process, it is one. Just the opposite of this, the other. So if other is one, process is zero, right? You see it. Okay. So if say that if turn is process, turn is one, and process is one, this is true. If the interested other is true, well, interested other is true too. So I will be in an infinite loop. Process one cannot continue. It will be in an infinite loop inside this function. It will wait until either this one or that one becomes just just false. Okay. So process p process one is 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 in an infinite loop here. Let me put the semicolon here. Okay. Process p one is waiting. So a switch will occur uh, one way or the other because of the timer interrupt maybe. Okay. The switch will occur and P0 will start running again. Where is P0? We left P0 right here, right? Before I started running the while loop. P0 will say that if turn is equal to process, what is turn? One. Turn is one. Process is zero. Okay, turn is equal to process is not satisfied. I will not, I will not run this while loop at all and I will leave this function as soon as I leave this function, I am inside my critical region. Okay, process number one, if it is, if the switch occurs again, it will be blocked in there because it is, it is, it is, it turn is process and the other interest is in true, okay? So, as soon as I am done as a P0, as soon as I am done with my critical region, I will, my, I will make my interest at zero false. In that case, P1 can enter the critical region because this one is going to be false for that one, okay? So that's a clever solution, very simple solution. All you do is just make sure that uh, you check your turn and you check your interested, okay? Uh, so you are, you are trying to see if the other process is interested. Basically what you're doing is see this one, okay? I have these two lines. You have to make these two things at the same time, okay? If there is a switch happening between those two be before you run the while loop and somebody else changes one of them, one of them, okay, then in that case, in that case, one of them, one of the processes has to be in this while loop because this both turn is uh, becoming a process and interested other is true, cannot be satisfied by both processes at the same time if they executed this line and this line before uh, the before this while loop okay so that's a, that's a solution that will satisfy all of our needs process zero can enter the critical region can leave and can enter the critical region again without uh, having to wait for the process number one so uh, rule number two three four will not be violated and rule number one cannot be violated we have seen that one okay good any questions Yes. What if there are more than uh, two processes? As I said, this is generalizable to more than two processes, but I will not talk about it. But the idea is the same. I mean, in that case, you are going to incre increase this interested, the, the, the interested array to n, okay, like this one. And you have to check if any of them are interested inside. Instead of saying that interested other, you have to check all of them. If Are there anybody interested in this? Right? So a little bit more involved, but it is, it is doable. Anybody else? So you guys, <laughs> you guys are asking the same question. Okay, so these are all, these are all nice software. Well, I mean, I give you only one solution, Patterson solution, and they all have implemented the same idea of busy waiting. Busy wait here, okay. Busy wait here okay but well, we didn't like the solution but but i mean because the, the uh, but the idea of busy waiting busy waiting and busy waiting a lock that uses busy waiting is called a spin lock i have a spin lock here and i have a spin lock there busy waiting well we don't like busy waiting much 
because busy waiting CPU is busy CPU is ki CPU keeps running this loop this meaningless loop it is waiting something to happen okay so maybe we should find a solution better than that and and in fact I mean I have never called any operating system routines when I am enforcing this mutual exclusion rules why don't I get some help from the operating system why don't I get some help from the from the from the hardware from the CPU that's the idea because if I am doing something multi-processed multi-threaded well CPU is going to help me remember hyper threading CPU say that well I support multi-threading I am going to give you n sets of registers you can switch between them very very easily very very inexpensively right so why don't the CPU why doesn't the CPU help me in 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 enforcing these kind of mutual exclusion rules that's the that's the idea and CPU says that okay I am going to give you this instruction TSL test and set lock okay remember our lock thing we are going to check it and we are going to increment it at the same time it does that okay TSL does that TSL reads the contents of the memory word lock lock is a memory word okay it reads this value of lock into this register rx r1 r2 r3 whatever and after it reads it here it increments the value of this lock by one or it stores a non-zero value inside this lock so this is done at the same time without any possibility of having an interrupt so two things are done at the same time okay well nothing happens at the same time but as a programmer i think it like that it, it is done at the same time uh, let's say when i say t s l r1 lock if lock is somewhere in the memory like this and its value if it is zero when i execute this instruction the value of r1 is going to be at the end i don't know at the beginning i don't know the value of r1 but at the end r1 will be zero and lock will be let's say one not zero okay so i am moving this lock just copying this lock to r1 and lock is going to be non-zero okay if at the beginning if lock is if lock is one so after running this instruction r1 is going to be one and lock is going to be one again because it is it's a non-zero so what is what is so so useful about this instruction you might say well it's then I learned, I mean if, if lock is really a lock variable okay I am both reading its value and making it one at the same time okay then when you check the value of r1 later if r1 area if r1 turns out to be zero that means that you got the lock if r1 is one you don't get the lock right so let's 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 run this again at the beginning lock is zero at the beginning lock is zero that means that lock is available i can enter the critical region run this instru instruction run this instruction okay after running this instruction r1 will become zero lock will become one so that means what when i check r1 if r1 is zero that means i got the lock and lock is automatically one now it is both set at the same time let's let's do the other case let's do the other case so i can enter the critical region in the other case if lock is one when i uh, execute this instruction tsl r1 lock rock is going to be r1 is going to be one and lock is going to be one again so check r1 if it is one that means that somebody has the lock you cannot enter the critical region and do this thing over and over again until until you get a r1 value of zero okay again a spin lock but i don't have to do this interested thing i don't have to do the uh, 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 giving my giving my process number to enter critical region function and etc okay so this is a very uh, nice way of making sure that no two processes can enter the critical region at the same time okay so again i am going to do the busy waiting but i will find a solution for that one in a few minutes okay tsl instruction is something has to be supported by the cpu 
if you don't have the CPU support like the TSL instruction, then your choice is the Patterson solution, software-based solution. Otherwise, you get the help of, from the hardware. hardware. And uh, in our modern uh, CPUs, we have these kind of instructions, not necessarily TSL. Sometimes, for example, for the Intel, for the Intel platforms, we have exchange instruction, okay? Exchange instruction. It just exchanges the values of this lock and the register. Just swaps, right? Okay? So if lock is one, register becomes one, and uh, as you see, okay? So this one makes sure that it's doing the, it's the, the, the right thing. Did everybody, did everybody sign this attendance sheet? Okay. So let's take, let's take 15 minutes of break. After the break, we will continue. You may sign it here. Neyin yazı okulu olacak mı? Bölümde dersleri herhangi bir yazı. Ben derdim ki bölüm başkanı mı? Tamam. Bu dersin yazı okulu olacak mı? Yazı okulu olacak mı diye soruyorsan ben vermeyeceğim. Tamam. Olmasa da karşı bir dersi de var. Yok ondan değil. Ona göre Arkadaşlar şu pencereleri bir açın ya. Ben anlamıyorum ki çok düşüyorsun. Dışarı çıkın. Başka bir... Thank you. 
yapıyorum başka. Hocaya verildi mi yoksa makyada? Ben son bir arkadaş aldım ki sonra da aldım. Ben son